Hi everyone, welcome to this topic 7 on differentiation. On the first three uh, video clips, we'll be going through the sketching of diff derivative graphs. So in this 7.1, I'll go through the guide to how we go about sketching the f'x graph, that means the dy dx graph. Now, let's look at the table that you have downloaded on this 7.1 video clip. And you can actually see that uh, there is this table that shows all the steps towards sketching the derivative graphs. I'm going to use one example to illustrate how these steps actually apply to the sketching of this graph. Suppose we have this oblique asymptote that is y equals to 2x minus 3. Mm -hmm. This will be, of course, 3 over 2. This, of course, is minus 3. Suppose there is also a vertical asymptote here, x equals to 2. Okay. And so they suppose the graph is like this. So let's label this one A and this point B. Okay. Suppose our point A, for simplicity, we use 3 over 2 and minus 2. And the point B, say, suppose it is 3 and 5. Okay. So this is actually the graph of y equals fx. And we are going to run through how actually this problem leads to the steps of the table shown is going to help us to sketch the derivative graph. So the first row of your table says that when fx has a stationary point x equals a, it becomes an x-intercept for the derivative graph. So these two points a and b are the stationary points, so it becomes an x-intercept. So it looks like this. So this point a, which is 3 over 2 minus 2, becomes 3 over 2, 0. And this point b, which is 3, 5, becomes 3, 0. Okay, becomes 3, 0. That's how it looks like. The second thing says that when fx changes in curvature from the concave upwards to the concave downwards, okay, concave upwards, to the concave downwards, then it will have a stationary point at y equals to f prime x. Okay? Now what this one means is that for example, I have a curve that looks like this. From concave upwards to concave downwards. Like this. So this part of the graph is concave upwards, this part of the graph is concave downwards. It says that when the graph of fx changes in curvature, from concave upwards to concave downwards, then there will be a stationary point at x equals a. Suppose a change occurs somewhere here, and that point will become a stationary point for the f prime x graph. So in this case, we do not have such a scenario. Then how about the gradient function? The gradient of y of fx is positive, means that f prime x is above the x axis. So that means that this part of the graph the gradient is positive. This part of the graph, the gradient is also positive. That means that the f prime x will have the graph that is above the x axis. Whereas this part of the graph has a gradient negative, and this part of the graph also has gradient negative. That means the f prime x will mean that the graph becomes below the x axis. Okay, that is point number three. Point number four says that if the f x has a vertical asymptote. At x equal a, the f prime x will also have a vertical asymptote at the same point. So this was the vertical asymptote x equal 2. That means that there should be expecting a vertical asymptote somewhere here. x equals to 2. Okay. Yeah. Then likewise, the next one, it says that fx has a horizontal asymptote y equal a, the f prime x will have a horizontal asymptote y equal 0. I'm not showing you here because in this case, the graph has an oblique asymptote. But in the next two video clips, we will actually have examples that deals with horizontal asymptote. So we go on to the last point which says that if the graph of fx has an oblique asymptote, y equals ax plus b, 
that f prime x will have a horizontal asymptote y equals a. So this graph has an oblique asymptote y equals 2x minus 3. This 2 is the a. So that means that the new graph will have a horizontal asymptote y equals 2. So I will draw y equals 2 here. Okay, y equals 2. So, then remember what we have just now went through. This part of the graph will be above the x-axis. Okay, this part of the graph. So that means that beyond 3, 0, the graph is above the x-axis and it approaches y equals 2. Like this. Okay. And this part of the graph is having a negative gradient, so it will be below the x-axis. Take note that the gradient is initially undefined, then it becomes close to zero. So undefined is here, negative infinity goes to zero. So this will be this part of the graph. Now we focus on this part of the graph. So for this part of the graph that is to the right of the point A, the gradient is negative. Okay, starting from gradient 0 until minus infinity. So it's below the x-axis from 0 gradient to negative infinity. Looks like this. Okay. Finally, this part of the graph, it has positive gradient, means the graph will be above the x-axis, starting from having a gradient that is close to 2, and then finally becomes 0. So close to 2, and finally becomes 0. So this will be the graph of y equals f prime of x. Okay. Yeah. So in the next two video clips later on, we'll be going through two more examples. One, the work examples that I'll be doing, and the other one is a practice question. Okay. Thank you.